guys welcome back to our channel accounts guru cool learn accounting online so today we are here with a new video and this video we have created based on the one of our viewers request and this video in this video we are going to discuss about accounts payable invoice processor interview questions and answers so we have captured few interview questions what are going to ask into the invoice processor job related to the accounts payable and considering the requirement of the invoice processors into the market so it's essential for you to know that what are all the skills and what are all the interview questions interviewer are going to ask and what you have to give the suitable answers for that so request viewers to watch the video till the end like the video share the video and subscribe our channel to get the more practical knowledge related to the accounting and finance and tap the bell icon to get the future video notification and someone rightly said that success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it and i know our viewers are too busy to acquire grasp and get the more knowledge related to the accounting and finance so definitely you guys are going to get the success so here we are so before before going to start the video uh, just pick in a two sentences it's essential for you to know that what is invoice processing so the invoice processing is the entire process your company's accounts payable team uses to handle supplier invoices and it starts when you receive an invoice and finish when payment has been made and recorded in the general ledger so the invoice processing is a crucial part from the accounts payable team and it starts from the when you receive the invoice and when and it's going to be finished when you do the payment for that invoice and book into the gl and we have the another uh, video is related to the best uh, asked interview questions related to the accounts payable and uh, what are the possible in answers for that so we have uh, captured that questions again into this video so it's a different question set of different questions related to the uh, invoice processors and uh, request to watch the video till the end what skills do you need for invoice processor so when you are going to do the interview for invoice processor job so for that what skill is required so interviewer is going to ask this question to you and you have to give the answer for that is to be successful in through the invoice processing job need essential skills are good knowledge of invoice booking direct and indirect tax accounting software communications and presentation skill so these are all the skill is required if you you want to successful into the invoice processing job invoice accounting says that this is related to the booking of the invoice so related to accounting knowledge direct and indirect tax the basic knowledge related to direct and indirect tax is essential since the tds is going to be applicable and related to gst uh, we need to know the basic concept of direct and indirect tax accounting software whatever account softwares are there related to that software you should be aware about that communication skill since you have to do the lot of communication with the vendors so considering that your communication skills should is should be the essential and the presentation skill related to the invoice processing report you have to uh, submit the accounts payable aging and uh, you have to do the vendor reconciliation so presentation skill also is one of the skill required if you want to be successful into the invoice processing job what importance of invoice processing so why the invoice processing is important the invoice processing is an important aspect of accounts payable and refers to the total amount that has to be paid for the goods services procured timely and accurate payments to every single vendor is a must even a very small deviation 
can have a huge impact on your business credibility and authenticity so the invoice processing job is very essential because all the invoice processing uh, related to the you can see the it's one of the most essential pillars for the accounts payable team so you have to process the invoices and uh, you have to do the booking for that and once you do that then it's going to be do the payment for that vendors how many invoices you process per day for this you have to give the answer based on your uh, skill related to the uh, invoice processing and how fast you do the you do the data entry and whatever you have the past experience based on that you have to give the answers to this question so you can say uh, i used to process the 50 invoices in a day or you can say uh, around 75 invoices per day so based, based on your speed you have to give the answer for this question what's mean by invoice and why it's important considering the invoice processing all the invoice is going to come to you for process so it's essential for you to know that what is mean by what is mean by invoice and uh, why it's important an invoice is an authenticated docs on which all details available like our entity name po number invoice number gstin number quantity and amount so the invoice is going to be the authentic authenticated documents on which most of the details is available on that invoice an invoice should be as per the gst compliant to avail the gst credit so as per the gst rules and regulations what invoice to be so that invoice should be as per the gst compliant else we are not able to get the gst input credit for that explain accounting entry for service invoice with gst so you have to do the invoice processing so it's essential for you to know what what accounting entry is there when you are doing the booking for service invoice with gst so the answer for that expense account debit input gst account debit to tds account credit to vendor payable account credit explain accounting entry for local purchase invoice with gst the earlier questions related to with service invoice and now this is for local purchase invoice so inventory account debit input gst account debit to vendor payable account credit since this is related to the purchase of material so on that tds is not applicable so only you have to be considered the respective inventory account debit input gst account debit since the gst is our credit to vendors payables account credit explain accounting entry for local reimbursement of expenses to the employee so why we have added here the word is local reimbursement of expenses to employee so the reasons for that is if you are doing the any reimbursement of the foreign expenses then reverse charge mechanism as per the rcm the gst is going to be applicable on that so that's reasons we have added here the word that's a local reimbursement of expenses to the employee so the accounting entry for that is expenses account debit to employee payable account credit explain accounting entry for import purchase invoice if you are doing the import purchase then what entry you have to pass into the system as the inventory account debit to vendor payable account credit so this is based on the commercial invoice related to the in foreign currency how much is payable to the vendor and whatever taxes are on that that we have to do as per the entry for boe so the custom duty account debit input igst account debit to boe payable account credit if we are doing the payment of our bill of entry then this entry is going to be passed into the systems and if uh, on behalf of us freight forwarder forwarder is doing the payment then we'll receive the freight forwarder bill and as per that we have to pass the entry into the system does tds applicable on service advance payment if we are 
asking any services and for that if we have to do the any advanced payment for that either the tds is applicable on that yes tds is applicable on service advance payment what's tds rate on professional services and rent professional fees 194j 10 percent tds is applicable on that and the threshold limit is 30k in a one financial year rent 194i 10 percent and the threshold limit for that is 2.40 lakh per annum if the individual and is not covered under tax audits and paying rent of more than 50,000 per month, the rate of TDS to be deducted is 5%. And in the absence of PAN of the landlord, TDS is required to be deducted at the rate of 20% instead of the percentage mentioned above. If the PAN is not there, then the, you have to do the TDS with the higher rate, that's a 20%, even though the percentage is lower mentioned for rent 194i. What is the threshold limit for TDS on contractor for single transaction? In a scenario where credit or payment to a contractor under TDS section 194C is below TDS threshold limit of INR 1 lakh in aggregate in a financial year and single transaction threshold limit INR 30,000, TDS will not be deducted. So if you are doing any payment to the contractor and that invoice amount for a single transaction is not more than 30,000 and the aggregate amount what you are going to pay to your contractor in the one financial year if it's not more than one lakh then tds is not applicable on that or else we have to deduct the tds either the two percent or one percent if it's an individual we have to deduct the tds that's one percent and if it's a company then we have to deduct the tds two percent what purchase order means a purchase order is a contract between the buyer and the seller and it gives specific information like product or services to be delivered, delivery date, and any other terms and conditions, including the price. The purchase order is also called as PO. Explain entry for payment the invoice. When we are doing the payment of our invoices, then what entry we have to pass into the systems. Irrespective of any payment, it's going to be that's respective vendor account debit to bank account credit. What, what's the due date for TDS? And what's the due date for TDS? Generally, the due date for TDS payment is always the seventh day of the next month with few exceptions like March. So for the March, the TDS is going to be due uh, by 30th April or 31st May. And for others, it's going to be 7th of the next month. What measures do you put in place to ensure suppliers are paid on time? So since you are going to be part of the AP team and you are taking care of the invoice processor processing, so it's essential for you to know that what controls you are going to put in place to ensure suppliers are paid on time. Monitor your payment systems. You have to do the monitoring of your payment system and uh, ensure it's a flexible enough to meet any different payment terms agreed with suppliers. The first, you have to ensure your payment terms and your system should be that much flexible to add the n number of payment terms as per what we agreed with the supplier. And uh, first, you have to pay undisputed bills by their due date. So whatever invoices is clean for that, you have to do the payment as per the due date. And wherever there is a disputed invoices for that, you have to handle differently. Ensure to keep a track of AP aging report to ensure that 
the timely payment to vendor. So you have to do the analysis based on the accounts payable aging report to do the payment to your vendors on time. What is the purpose of an AP aging report? So what's the benefit and what's going to be added advantage of AP aging report? The purpose of the accounts payable aging report is to provide a comprehensive summary report of outstanding amounts payable to the suppliers who provide goods and services to your company. So from the AP aging report, we are able to get the comprehensive summary of the listing of the aging invoices. And based on that, we are able to do the analysis for aged payable invoices. What is debit balance in accounts payable? If the accounts payable is having debit balance, it means that some payment is made in excess more than what actually is provided or some expenses pending to book. Ideally, the accounts payable should be as a credit balance that's payable from our side. But if in case the balance is in a debit, then it means that either we have done the excess payment or we haven't booked the invoices. We just passed the one entry for the payment and related to that, we haven't booked the invoice into the systems. So in that case, uh, we have to reclassify these balances to the current assets, uh, saying that the loans and advances to the vendors. Uh, and if you haven't done that, the balance of your AP aging report or it's a total outstanding report is not going to give the true and fair pictures. Give some example of invoice disputes. So what are all the examples of invoice dispute? So invoice is not as per the purchase order. Invoice is not as per the GST compliant. So these are all the dispute related to the invoice processing. What is a credit note and debit note in accounts payable? A debit note and credit note are issued when the goods are returned by a customer to the supplier or seller of those goods. A debit note reflects a positive amount, whereas a credit note reflects a negative amount. A debit note lowers account receivables, whereas a credit note lowers accounts payable. So in case if you return some material to the supplier or if return some material from the seller, in that case, the debit note and credit note is going to come into the exist. What are the documents required for material import payment? If you have any imported materials and we have to do the payment for that, then what documents are required to do the payment for imported material? So bill of entry, commercial invoice, bill of flooding, airway bill, and purchase orders is going to be required for do the payment for imported material. What is a three-way matching and two-way matching? A two-way matching systems make sure all data on the purchase order and invoice aligns. So related to two-way match, it's going to be do the matching of your invoice and your purchase order. So whatever details is mentioned on the purchase order, that should be the in line with the invoice. A three-way match is a process of matching purchase order, goods received note, that's the GRN, and the supplier's invoice. So the two-way match and three-way three match is the process to ensure the completeness of the invoice related to the two-way match purchase order and invoice is going to be matched and in a three way match the additional grn that's a goods received note is going to be ensured to put the more control so this is all from this video and uh, related to the accounts payable what we have learned from this video is that uh, the most asked the questions in invoice processor interview and answers for that.
So thanks for watching the video till the end and uh, request viewers to like the video, share the video and subscribe our channel to get the more practical knowledge related to accounting and finance and uh, tap the bell icon to get the future video notification. If you want we to create any video uh, on specific any if you have any query then put it in the comment we'll come up with video for that and if you want to connect with us then uh, you can reach with you can reach to us on our email id that's accounts.gurukul at the rate yahoo.com so thanks and take care and keep smiling